Today we're making this animation in geometry nodes. Hello everyone, this is Dude Blender, and welcome to this new series, Do It in Blender, where I show you how something that I find on the internet could be done in Blender. This time I found this cool effect in Instagram while navigating in my iPhone. As far as I know, this was done in After Effects. So let's jump right in. This one is relatively simple to do in geometry nodes. For the eye geometry, you can make your own, or you can download the human based meshes bundle that the amazing folks at Blender have made available for us. You can log into their website side, go to download, demo files and click here to download the file. This is the file that you'll get and I will be using the stylized eye, this one. I use very simple material, so for the cornea I just have a glass BSDF node, for the pupil I just have a default material, I change the color to black, for the sclera I just have a white color material and for the iris I've also got a very simple material except I added a few colors for some DNI. Here you can even add fantastic colors such as red, yellow, purple or any other color you might want. Now let's create a plane and subdivide it as many times as you want. We will instance one eye on each vertex. In the Geometry Nodes workspace, with the plane selected, add a new node group. We'll add an Instance and Points node and we'll pull the eyes info by dragging it from the outliner. Let's connect the eyes geometry to the instance, pin this node tree so that it does not disappear whenever we select another object. Let's create a new plane to use as a background. We'll give this plane a new material. I'll just leave the default settings for now and I will change the color to a baby blue. For now, we don't need the original instance, so let's hide it here. I rotated this plane, so I'm gonna control A, apply rotation and scale. You'll see that the eyes are now pointing forward. Now just make sure that the eyes are pointing away from the background plane and if they're not, then show the original instance again, select it and tab into edit mode, select everything with A and rotate the eye here in edit mode as needed so that the eyes are pointing away from the plane. Right now I don't need to do anything so I'll just leave it there and I will hide it again. Now let's add an empty that will control where the eyes are looking at. Place it in front of the plane with the eyes. Scale it down a little bit if you need to. Now let's bring the information of the empty into the node group. For each eye, we need to find a vector that points from it to the empty and then give that rotation to that eye. The easiest way to do this is to subtract the location vector of the empty from the position vector of the eye. So let's add a position node and we'll connect it and the empty object info location to a vector math node with the subtract function. Now to rotate the eyes, we connect this node to an align Euler to vector node. Make sure you connect it to the vector connector and not the rotation. Now we'll connect this rotation to the rotation of the instances. Let me show you one thing. If I move the empty, the rotation of the eyes in fact changes. But if I select the plane with the eyes and move that, you'll see that the rotation of the eyes don't change. That's because the coordinate system that the empty is using is that of the world origin, not the coordinate system of the plane. The empty is in fact moving in relationship to the world origin. But if I move the plane, the plane is not moving in relation to its own origin, because the origin is moving with it. What we want is to have the empty to use the local coordinate system of the plane. The way to do that is just by clicking here. Now if I move the empty, the eyes react. But if I move the plane, the eyes also react. Now the eyes are still not looking directly at the empty and that's because we're not using the correct alignment axis. The original eye is aligned to the Y axis, therefore we need to use here the Y axis alignment. Now if I go back to front view and move the empty around, you'll see that the eyes are looking towards the empty. If our original eye was rotated and looking straight down, so being aligned to the Z axis, we would need to change the alignment axis to Z. And if I go back to front view, we can see the eyes are again looking at the empty. One more thing that can happen, I'm gonna hide the background for now. If you find that all of the eyes are looking exactly away from the empty, it just means that we subtracted the position vectors in the wrong order. So you can just select the subtract node and press Alt S to switch the inputs and now all of the eyes should be looking towards the empty. Next we want to move each eye away from the empty when they're close to each other. So we need to have a direction of movement and a magnitude. The direction we already have, it's here, we just need the magnitude. I wanna normalize this vector, that means I'm gonna take this vector and make its magnitude 1. You can skip that step, but I find it easier to work with normalized vectors. Now we can say that this is our direction vector, it just points to where we want the eyes to move. Now we need to tell Blender how much to move them. We want the eyes to react more the closer they are to the empty. In math terms, we want a function that looks like this, where the offset is higher when the distance from it to the empty is smaller. A very easy function that does exactly this is y equals 1 over x. So we add a vector math node with the distance 
operation, and we connect both the instance's position and the location of the empty. You'll see that this is gray as opposed to blue here, so it outputs a float number, not a vector. So let's add not a vector math, but a math node, and we'll divide one over that number. Now to have more control over the offset of the eyes, depending on the position of the empty, we'll add a map range node, and for now the from min will change it to 2.5, the from max will change it to a relatively big value, like 10. We'll adjust these values later. So now we have the direction vector and the magnitude, so we just need to vector multiply them, and now this vector represents the offset that we want for each eye. So we'll add a set position node, and we'll connect this to the offset. Now if we move the empty closer to the eyes, you'll see that it moves them away. We can define the radius of influence with the from min, and then we change the to max to define how strong that influence will be. One more thing here, I'm going to unhide my background plane and you'll see that the eyes are going through the plane. We don't want this to happen so we need to set the y offset to zero. The way we do that is we take this vector and multiply it by a vector that has one in x, zero in y and one in z. Now if I go to side view you can see that there is no clipping. If I go to front view and move the empty around you'll see that the effect is working properly. Now at this point make sure that you adjust the map range node to get the exact effect that you like and you can also select the original instance tab into edit mode A to select everything and you can change its size to something that you like better. Once you're happy you can hide this as we won't be needing it anymore and we can move on to the arrow. If we look at the original post you'll see that the arrow follows a path changing its orientation and bending around the path. This actually creates a little bit of complexity but nothing that we cannot fix. So make an arrow with basic modeling techniques. We have to subdivide it a few times so that it can bend around the curve. I'll just leave the subdivisions in 6. Now let's add a curve modifier to the arrow. I'm gonna scale the arrow and place it near the empty. And again, as we always do, control A and apply the scale. This is always a good habit to have. Now let's add a Bezier curve. With the curve selected, tab into edit mode and press Alt C to close the curve so that we can easily animate a loop. Now trace the path that you want the arrow to have. I'll just use an infinity shape similar to the original video. Now back to the arrow. The curve modifier is a little tricky to use. So to make sure that everything works properly, apply the rotation of the scale to both the arrow and the curve and make sure that the origin of your arrow is at the center of its geometry. If it's not, just right click on it, set origin, origin to geometry. Now place your arrow at the start of the curve. Select the arrow and in the curve object, select the curve that you created. The deform axis will be the axis along which if you move your object, it will follow the curve. Let me go to solid mode so that it's easier to see. If I grab the arrow and move it on the X axis, you'll see that it follows the path. Now if I move it in Z, you'll see that it moves in a strange diagonal direction and it also deforms the arrow. If I move it on the Y axis, it moves properly. So I told you that the curve modifier was a little bit tricky. Now if I change the deform axis to Z, a couple of things happen. The first one is that it changes its location. The second one is that it changes the rotation. So we're gonna fix both. With the arrow selected, press R to rotate Z 90. And now we can see that it's facing the right way. Now let's change its location. First let's bring it forward. Again, this is a little tricky. If you grab it and try to move it along the Y axis, this very strange thing happens. Happens. That's because of how the curve modifier works. In this case, we have to move it along the X axis until it's on the location that we want it. I'm gonna go to the side view and I'm gonna move both the arrow and the curve so that they are both closer to the empty. Now I'm gonna go back to front view. We grab the arrow and we're gonna move it along the Y axis until it matches the curve. I'm also gonna put the empty on the same spot. Now I'm gonna go to material preview so that I can see the arrow. And now if I grab the arrow and move it along the Z axis, it follows the path correctly. Now you'll see that the arrow has some strange deformations. To fix that, select the curve, go to the curve properties here and increase the resolution. I'm gonna go to 64, but probably 32 should be enough. I'm gonna put it back on its original spot, place the empty on the arrow as well, and now we're just gonna need to animate. Now we would love to use the position of the arrow instead of the position of the empty here in the geometry nodes. The thing is that because we're using the curve modifier, the actual position of the arrow is all the way here. That's the origin of the arrow. So the position of the object and the position of the geometry is not the same, so we cannot use that. If I were to use that arrow's information and connect it to our node tree, now if I move the arrow along the z-axis, you'll see that the eyeballs are in fact reacting to its position, meaning the origin, but not to the geometry. The way to fix this is we're going to animate the arrow and then we're gonna 
separately animate the empty in a way that it follows the same path. So let's add a timeline so that we can see our keyframes. We select the arrow, press N to show this panel, go to the first frame and keyframe its location. I'm just going to use the default 100 frames and now we go to the last frame plus one. So this is to correctly animate the loop. We grab the arrow and move it along the Z axis all the way until it does one complete lap and ends in the exact same place. Now we keyframe this location and we just check that the last frame and the first frame have similar positions of the arrow. It's slightly off, but that's not a problem. It just needs to be close enough. Now if we play the animation, we can see the arrow moving along the curve. The only thing is that it's accelerating at the beginning and slowing down at the end, so we want to change that. We go to our timeline, everything is already selected, but if not, just press A to select everything, press T for interpolation and change that to linear. Now if we play the animation, we can see that it's moving at a constant speed along the whole curve, which will allow us to easily loop the animation. Now we're gonna animate the empty, so select the empty and then shift click on the curve so that the empty and the curve are selected, but the curve is the active object, press Control P to set parent 2 and click on follow path. Now the empty is set to follow the curve. Now if you press space, you'll see that both the arrow and the empty are following the curve. The difference is that the arrow is animated with keyframes and the empty is just following the path of the curve. And since both are animated in exactly the same number of frames, the movements of both matches perfectly. Now you're ready to change anything you want, change the background, light your scene, change the materials of the arrow and do anything you want to render your animation. Here's a side by side of the original and ours done in Blender. If you want to learn more about geometry nodes make sure that you check this video out and maybe this one to know more about vector math that's it for today drop a like comment and subscribe if you like the video and connect with me on tiktok and instagram with the handle at dude underscore blender i'm dude blender happy blending